the heart of art, scoping the Brussels Valley for the best artists and bringing them to your radio. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Hector Nino. Hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of The Heart of Art, the second episode of our series. Um, today, we have a very good show for you planned. Um, but before we get into who our guests are going to be, I'm going to raise some suspicions here. Um, I would like to uh, kind of hold an open call for everyone. Now that you guys know a little bit about how my show goes, I am actively looking for artists. If you know of anyone who might be interested in interviewing or you yourself um, have a art that you are passionate about, I encourage you to email theheartofart at tamu.edu and I can get back to you as soon as I can. Once again, that is theheartofart at tamu.edu. If uh, you have anybody in mind, please do not hesitate in contacting me. Um, those emails go straight to me. And I will also be giving you guys updates on certain events that are going on in the community um, that would interest you, any art events. I will be exposing you guys to galleries or, you know, certain art events. So if you do have an event in mind that you would like to promote, you could send it to that same email, the heart of art at tamu.edu. All right. Well, now back to the show. Um, we have two guests today. Uh, our first guest will be Dr. Carol Fox Henricks, who is a photographer here in the Brazos Valley. And we have a very interesting conversation about technology and how that is used within photography. Uh, and we also have a painter named Colleen Bradfield. And she actually has a, a background in chemistry, which comes about in interesting ways in her paintings. So make sure you stay tuned and listen to their stories. This is The Heart of Art. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the studio. Uh, I am here today with Dr. Carol Fox Henrik. And uh, she is a photographer. And if you'd like to see her art while we're having this discussion, uh, you can go to her website, cfh.art. And yeah. Hello, Dr. Carol. How are you today? Hi, I'm very good. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, to start off, I'd like to uh, go into a little bit of your background. Uh, I saw through your website that you're a Galveston native. I am. I am. I was born on the island, which is a, a th big thing if you're from Galveston. Yeah. Um, I was wondering uh, how that affected your art itself. So I, that's where I really fell in love with nature. I mm -hmm. spent a lot of time outside, I think probably as kids of my generation did. We got kicked out of the house, you know, pretty regularly and to go outside and play. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, both my both sets of grandparents actually lived on the island and one set of great grandparents. And so I had fields and um, bays to wander around in. So I really fell in love with nature, I think, at that point. And that's really what drives drives me is my love of nature. Mm -hmm. Then did you start a photography in Galveston as well? I did not. No. I did not. I didn't oh. get into photography until, I don't know, around 2006. 2006. And it was kind of an accident. What? <laughs> It was. Um, I was working in technology. My background is in instructional technology. And mm -hmm. so I was working and, you know, looking how it's for some continuing education. And so my supervisor suggested, why don't you do something for fun and take a photography class? Well, because of my background was in technology, I picked the digital photography class. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of spurred an interest in that. And I really do enjoy the challenges involved in all that. Yeah. Do you mind going into your education, what that was exactly? So I have a, a couple of different degrees, right, mm -hmm. uh, from the University of Phoenix and University of Houston and um, in instructional technology and then in educational leadership. Okay. And I'm, I'm guessing the technology aspect is what you kind of gravitate towards. It is. It is. I, um, whenever I've 
started it, because with digital photography you have to use a computer right yeah. if you're going to do anything with your your photos and so when I started figuring out oh I can do this and I can do that and it just felt like a light bulb went on and mm. I said this is this is what I want to be doing yeah. and oh well I know in photography, it has to do a lot with the technology that you're using, the, your tool, the camera. Um, do you have any suggestions on what uh, type of mode or settings you, you use, you prefer, or any type of lenses that you sure. recommend? Sure. So for years, I shot with Canon equipment. And not that I really feel that one brand is any better than the other, but that's just what I started with. And so that's what I was most familiar with. All right. Um, as far as the Canon, when I was shooting with that, I think the lens, the 24 to 105 lens that I had was my most favorite. Mm. But as I've gotten older, that equipment it gets heavy. Pretty oh. the, the professional lenses and the longer lenses that you need, like to shoot birds in flight, that gets rather heavy. So I've switched over to mirrorless, and I went to the Olympus brand, and um, you know I'm enjoying that a lot. Awesome. Um, I mean, through your art, I can see that you visited a lot of places. Do you have any, you know, favorite locations or locations that you gravitate to? So Texas is really where a lot of my work is from. Beautiful Texas. Yeah, well, yes. yeah. Uh, we have traveled a lot uh, to a lot of the Caribbean islands and those kinds of things. Mm. But one of my very, very favorite places, and if you look at the things on my website, you'll see, is Caprock Canyon State Park. That I did not realize that a place like that existed in Texas. Um, you know, growing up along the Gulf Coast, I, we didn't really travel that to that part of Texas. But to see the canyons and the, the red dirt and the bison just roaming freely through the park was, was r a really awesome experience. Uh, I'll make sure to visit it because I'm from South Texas, so I haven't traveled a lot in Texas, but looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> um is there like a, an overall message that you would like to portray through your pictures? I know, you know, when I look at them, they're very close up, very intimate. Like we're not even supposed to be watching. Um, or is it more of like preservation? What would you say is the main mes message? So that's a good question. Because um, I think I, I do approach it. There's a two pronged approach, hmm. first of all, because I am a Texas master naturalist. And so one of the things that I try to do is take photographs of what I have seen and, you know, upload them to iNaturalist so that they're documented that this species existed at a certain location. Okay. Those pictures are, are informative and more documentary. Um, the other side of it is to maybe help you see something you wouldn't normally see. Like the picture that I have of the cormorant, I have always said these are the ugliest birds. They're black. They're all over the place. They're a nuisance but they have a turquoise eye, which the normal per you can't see unless you have this photograph and you zoom in on it and it's turquoise and it's beautiful. And so I think if I can help someone learn to appreciate the nature around them, they'll become better stewards of mm. what's around them. Okay, awesome. Um, going through your Instagram, I noticed that you don't like to gatekeep. I mean, you uh, are teaching people about your craft um, and you have workshops, right? I do, and um, some of them are free, free webinars. The, one of the things that I have been very appreciative of as a photographer, the community of photographers as a whole are very friendly, very willing to help other people, and it's not necessarily about making a buck, hmm. right? So this is more about sharing, sharing the love and helping other people build their craft. Yeah. And I encourage people to go and look at your Instagram because there's, I mean, the latest one was texturizing your photo. I hadn't even thought of that. I mean, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where, so I go through phases, right? Mm -hmm. um, so like right now, that's my most favorite thing to do. That's where you're at. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> um, you know, now that your art is your work, um, how was that transition like going from, you know, maybe it being a hobby to your you know, how you sustain your life. So luckily I don't have to make a living this All way, right. but what it has allowed me to do is to focus, mm -hmm. to focus on, on doing these things. And then I can make my plans. You know, I can plan out workshops and I don't have to worry about a full-time job doing something else. Right. Um, so I do, it does free me up to be able to, and oh, hey, by the way, if there's a place we want to go to so I can get some more photos, we, you know, we can pick up and go. 
So awesome. it, yeah. So this this has been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd also like to mention like the fact that your art is digital. I feel like it uh, gives you so much of a freedom that you can kind of like place it on anything because on your website I see you have all types of merchandise that you can put your photography on I thought that was awesome I mean I never even thought of that I mean digital art is it something that you have seen has benefited you from other artists that might not be digital Uh, so in some respects yes Mm -hmm. Um, in other the traditional artist because this year I am president of the local visual art society. Right. I wanted and to get so, into that. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of painters and artists of all media in there. And so sometimes digital photography is frowned upon and even by the traditional photographers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they don't want they want you to do minimal manipulation of the of the image. Right. But the other the flip side of that is so much is digital now that a lot of the painters and those kinds of artists are struggling with taking photos of their art and getting good quality photos so that they can upload it and they can sell prints or put it on a coffee mug or a face mask or that kind right, of thing. Right, that's how you make money off so, of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very important. So it, it it's a skill that almost all the artists these days are, are needing. Right. That's very important. Uh, so about the Visual Art Society, it's a nonprofit, correct? It is a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. The full name is the Visual Art Society of Bryan College Station. Okay. So we serve artists in the in the local area. Artists doesn't matter who you are. In the visual arts, uh, we have sculptors. As I said, we have painters. We have potters. We have people who make jewelry. People who do embroidery. Wow. Um, all kinds of things, and we meet once a month. And you know, it's free. There's a it's visualartsociety.org. So so all types you know. of art that you can see, right? We can see. We have two shows a year, mm-hmm. and then we have exhibits in some hotels, local hotels, out at the Brazos Center, Perrine Winery, and so our members are able to display their art out there. We just put up new art at the Wyndham. Awesome. So. Well, go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any upcoming events that you'd like to tell our audience about? Well, as far as the uh, Visual Art Society, we opened our call for art for our spring show. Ooh, awesome. And so that deadline is in March. For, for So anyone, you don't have to be a member, you can enter. Um, and it will be displayed at the gallery. So everyone's welcome to enter. Um, personally, I have a webinar on um, adding textures to your photographs. It's going to be, a, it's a Zoom It'll be Zoom, mm-hmm. um, and that's in that's on February eighth, I think. And you registrations on my website. So awesome! Everyone knows how to use Zoom nowadays, right? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, if uh, you are interested in uh, Carol's art, feel free to check out her Instagram and her website at cfh dot art. Um, thank you so much for coming in. I had a great time, and I learned so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome back to the KMU studios. My name is Hector Nino and today we have a very special guest. Her name is Colleen Bradfield. She is a painter and currently is the in-house studio artist at the Arts Council. Hello Colleen, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Hector, how are you? I'm doing good. Excited to have our conversation today. (laughs) All right, well to begin I'd like to start uh, where you are native to, your hometown. Uh, Do you have one? Well, I was born in Columbus, Ohio, but um, I have lived most of my life in the state of Florida on either the East Coast or the Panhandle of Florida. So right. I, I kind of consider myself a flexin because flexin. I'm Florida and Texas at this point. Right. Okay, so would you say that Florida is what has influenced your art mostly? or? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And in what ways would you say that it has? Um, Probably because I've lived so much of my life um, along the coastal areas. Um, I love the blues of the water and the greens, um, especially Panama City area has the Emerald Coastline where um, the water can be very crystal clear and um, it's it's lovely. So blues and greens tend to end up in a lot of my paintings. Mm. Um, and also the sunshine. Um, Florida is the sunshine state. True. And true. Um, I even have my um, my email um, as Sunny, <laughs> Sunny <laughs> SCB. For my I initials. noticed that. I was yes. wondering what that was. Yes. I love awesome. the sunshine. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. 
And so as a child, I saw that you were into painting, drawing, and sculpting, correct? And then you took that into college? Yes, I did. Um, I basically followed my father to his alma mater, Mm -hmm. um, Ohio State University. And um, I left there in my junior year um, for family reasons and um, changed majors, changed schools. Um, Back in Florida, I was living in Melbourne, Florida, where Florida Institute of Technology was my option. So I ended up uh, a science major. Falling in love with chemistry, yes. Yes. In fact, my career was teaching chemistry to students and um, also research. Awesome, awesome. Um, Was there, was it difficult trying to balance out the teacher life with your life as an artist? It was at times, especially once I had children, Um, but I've discovered that if you really want to do something, you find a way to manage your time, and um, so I think between being um, a teacher, a mother, and an artist, um, the artist ended up being the last on the list, (laughs) So, um, but I did get things accomplished during the summer usually, and uh, sometimes during some breaks. But um, it's not until retirement that I've been able to really devote myself um, to becoming a professional artist. Right, yeah. And I've seen, I mean, you've thrown yourself to art. I mean, it, I feel like it encapsulates a lot of your life now. It does. Yes, I love that. It does. Um, so about your art, I saw that you were interested in our, the medium of Sorry, I don't know how, really how to say this. Encaustics? Is that Encaustics. correct? Encaustics. Encaustics? Oh, uh, I have. Um, when you've been involved in art for so many years, you find yourself diversifying sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, I really enjoy acrylic paints the most, but I have wandered off into other areas, Um, sometimes sculpting with clay, uh, sometimes doing uh, acrylic pours or uh, resins. And of course, the encaustics is basically melted what you think of as a melted wax technique. Okay. okay. But, um, so I, I like to explore. Yeah, I saw in your paintings, you see that uh, you have a focus of layers of colors and shapes. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. I was wondering whether this had any relation to do with your chemistry background, maybe? Because <laughs> I noticed in the Arts Council website, you have this beautiful uh, painting of deep blues, and there's so much depth in there. I, it kind of even resembled a little bit like a chemical reaction. even. <laughs> so I, I was just wondering whether chemistry had anything to do with your art. It, it actually does. Um, everything from some of the designs that I have done to um, some of my methods. Um, Mm. I even use pipettes at times to pipette and um, put different layers on and um, add different types of uh, just interesting, everything from texture to uh, varying the appearance. Yeah, that's very innovative. (laughs) (laughs) It's fun. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And now uh, more about like the content of your paintings. I see there's a lot of animals, uh, a lot of zebras and birds. Um, Yes. Maybe even like safari animals. I've seen elephants and rhinos. So why do you gravitate towards animals? Um, I've always had a love of the African animals. um, And I was fortunate that some of my um, past students um, have spent a good deal of time over in Africa, um, in particular with the Peace Corps. And um, I've been pleasured to have some of them send me wonderful photographs to use uh, for inspiration. Um, along with just appreciating and having concern for um, what I would consider to be species of special concern or threatened or even endangered um, that you see uh, so much of in the animal world right now. Um, I also have a love of watching the shorebirds. And um, I think that that's another Florida influence because, you know, so much time on the beaches, you watch the birds. Definitely. (laughs) uh, so would you say there's like an overarching theme of conservationism within your work? Yes, I think so. Um, a recent exhibit that I was in um, was actually called Art from the Soul. And I think that um, that is really a big factor for me as an artist is to be able to not only share the joy of the painting um, and sculpting, but also to be able to have it reflect some of my um my inner feelings and thoughts. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So would you say you love the process of creating? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I enjoy the process of creating even more than I do the product. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. I, I mean, I'm always happy when a painting or a sculpture turns out the way I like it or maybe other people like it. But it's the act and the process of the creation that, to me, is so fulfilling and so very therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to speak a little bit more about that process of creating and what it does to you personally. Um, what is your, the process that you take with it, your art? Oh, well, I'm considered a very intuitive artist. Um, a lot of artists will say, well, especially people who are new to art, they're like, oh, I don't know how to get started. That's very seldom an issue for me uh, because of the way that I approach a canvas. Uh, it doesn't matter what I put on at the beginning. I just pick a color that happens to appeal to me, and I start putting on layers of color. And um, as I add those layers of color, sometimes there are images that appear. And if it's an image that I like, it pleases me, sometimes I leave it there. And sometimes I get so busy just mixing different colors that whatever was there, I don't know where it went. <laughs> <laughs> Completely changes, it, becomes it can, something different. It can. And then, um, but if I find something that I really see, an image that starts to appear, I mean, I, I have paintings that when I look at them, I realize, oh, there's an elephant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and then if I see something like that, then I continue. And um, sometimes I'll then go and look for a resource. And um, looking at that resource, then I end up sometimes having something that is very recognizable. It's not always exactly the way it should be, but it certainly is recognizable. Um, wow. And, and then the other ap- aspect, of course, of painting, um, sometimes it's a commission. Sometimes it's somebody says, I love your zebras. Would you paint me a zebra? Right. You know, and if and if that case, you know, they want a real zebra, then I'll paint the real zebra. <laughs> You're very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I've been doing that since the 60s. So, <laughs> yeah, for me, the art was about enjoyment. It was about um, the creative process and not with the end goal of, oh, I have to make sure this has a certain appearance because otherwise it might not sell, you right. know, mm-hmm. and I know there are a lot of artists that that they need to do that. They need to, they need to be able to paint or sculpt or um, throw a pottery or do whatever they need to do and market it. Mm-hmm. And I've been very blessed and very fortunate that I don't have that concern, that I can, I can actually just involve myself in the creative process. Right. And whatever comes up, you know, it may be stacked against a wall <laughs> with a few other paintings, but... Um, but you can always recover those. Yeah. I, I, I never have a problem. If, if, if I don't have a fresh canvas, I can always go to a stack and take an old one. And uh, it's Continue amazing it. what you can do sometimes. You, you, you can look at a painting that you didn't feel satisfied with and approach it and start putting new colors on it. And sometimes, all of a sudden, you end up with one of your favorite paintings. Mm-hmm. You know, I see, like, maybe um, a relationship between the paintings and, like, oneself and kind of, like, the process of creating that art is kind of you growing as a person as well, you know, yes. along with the art. So yes. th- that, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I, I can look back to my childhood Um you know, I, 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 will, I will share with you that one of my first art experiences was um, with my father, who was a professional painter. Um, he gifted me with this little um, oil paint set. I'm sure much to my mother's distress. <laughs> but, but when he handed it to me, I, all I saw were all these beautiful little containers of color. But his words were, Put, put it where you want. Don't pay any attention to those numbers and lines <laughs> because obviously I, I understood in later life it was a little paint by number set. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Just put whatever you want wherever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? But, but I'm mm-hmm. sure that that was a factor, you know, in my growing love of just wanting to put color onto something. Right. Not to follow the rules or the guidelines in any right. way. Right. Um, and now... I saw you're also, well, the in-house studio artist with the Arts Council. Would you like to talk a little bit about your involvement with the Arts Council? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I have been on the Arts Council board. Well, typically on the board, you, send, you spend a three-year term. And most been, 
uh, a two three year term. Mm -hmm. So I did two three year terms for six years, and then um, I went ahead and accepted an option to um, be a college station representative uh, to the Arts Council for two years. Oh, so wow. I'm now in my eighth year on the board. Uh, which I think reflects my love of the Arts Council and my devotion to their mission of making the arts accessible to everyone in this area and to supporting and promoting the art and the artists. And what I like about the Arts Council, um, because I, my husband, um, before he passed away, was a musician, um, a scientist, but a musician. <laughs> and so... Um, for us, the Arts Council represented both the performing arts, the visual arts, plus history and culture. And so it became our main focus of um, what we wanted to do to support the arts in our community. And that was to support the Arts Council and awesome. um, the new facility where they had that huge gallery, yes. classrooms, business offices, uh, conference center. It's just, it's an amazing building. And people, I don't know that people realize that it's open, it's free, you can just walk in anytime and see an exhibit. And you can see three studio artists working. And um, of course, we have residents, um, we have artists that we support for residency programs, one year round, one for the summer, and one uh, where it's changed out every six months. So, Oh, wow. So um, there's always something to see. Oh, at the Arts Council, there is always something to see and do. Awesome. Children's classes, everything, yes. All right, well, yeah, I mean, we have a similar goal here. I'm, I'm trying to get these uh, Brazos Valley artists, give them exposure, yes. um, give them opportunities even. So if you're out there, make sure to go check out the Arts Council. Yes. Um, and do they have any upcoming events that you'd like to uh, tell the, our audience? Yes, uh, there's a Lone Star flag exhibit that's up right now that's on loan from the Bush Library. Oh, and... Wow. Um, we also, uh, Saturday morning, will be hanging a new um, foyer exhibit uh, that is all on astronomy. It's just got amazing. Um, oh, wow. Yes. Um, Professor, uh, Professor Dr. Light um, has just some incredible photos that he has taken and framed and mounted, and uh, they'll be on display, and his wife's... Um, she does stained glass work, and that is hanging in some of the windows right now, too. Oh, so. wow. Beautiful. Good. Well, make sure you're one of the first ones to go check out that four-year exhibit. And, wow, thank you so much, Colleen, for helping me out. I have learned a lot, and thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're very welcome. And I would encourage any artists that are interested in the Arts Council to come and become a member because it'll give them a chance to exhibit as well. All right. You heard it here. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the end of our show. Uh, I would like to give uh, another thank you to Dr. Carol Fox Henricks, as well as Colleen Bradfield. Thank you so much for helping me out with this show. Uh, once again, if you do have any events coming up that you think would benefit our audience, or if you are an artist yourself that would like to get interviewed, make sure to send an email to theheartofart at tamu.edu. And make sure to stay tuned for next week where I will be giving you uh, certain galleries and exhibits and events that I think would interest you. Have a good week.